This is The John Tegg Show, an actor's odyssey and more. I am your host, John Tegg. Give me a follow on Instagram and Twitter. My handle is at John J. Tegg. That's at J-O-H-N-J-T-A-G-U-E. Drop me a message, give me a follow, I'd love to hear from you. This episode is brought to you by the Rolling Soldier Digital Web Series, a psychological web series about a CIA agent on the run with what is left of his team and family. Available on YouTube and Facebook. Check it out. And Rising Lotus Yoga, with yoga studios available in Sherman Oaks and Newhall, California. Let joy rise. www.risinglotusyoga.com and www.risinglotusyogascv.com. How you been? <laughs> kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> kind of crazy. You know, it's 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 weird because being a writer, you're holed up all the time anyway. Yeah. So it, it's not a big transition for me, but everybody around me is vibrating. Yeah, I'm at that point now where um, I'm starting to lose it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I just had to put yeah. myself. I just had to put myself on tape with Claire and um, these self tape auditions that we have to do now. They're uh, they're a marriage killer, man. Oh yeah, dude, <laughs> I mean, it's, <laughs> it is brutal. I and you know how I am. My patience is like every little thing yeah, pisses me off. Like the dogs clawing at the door to try to get in. And, yeah. you know, the plane flying by or the neighbors next door banging their weights in their garage because they can't go to the gym. So it's all these things. Anyway, um, yeah, let's go ahead and start. No, the you're show. not. Let's start the show. You're, you're not alone in the craziness. I, <laughs> yeah. So all right. Let, let, me do my, let me do my quick little uh, intro. Okay, go here. ahead. We'll get, we'll get started. Yeah. Hey, everybody. What's up? This is the John Tag Show. I'm John Tag. Today's guest is the one and only the fantastic Rick Parks. What's up, Rick? Uh, I'm here, man. <laughs> right on. I'm still right on. alive. <laughs> yeah. So we're just uh, we're just talking about dealing with the whole coronavirus. And is everybody healthy? Is everybody okay on your end? Yes, we're all healthy. We're we're being ultimately careful because uh, both kids are home. But uh, oh wow, my that's daughter, fun. Yeah. Oh yeah. And we're all four of us using all of the internet all the time. Yep. Same thing over here, man. I mean, it's like, I'm, I'm if the I'm, internet goes down, we're going to eat each other alive. Oh, could you imagine? Could you imagine if the internet went down? What would we do? Oh, no, it would be, it would be, it would the, be, it would be the, the Donner party. It'd be planet of the apes. It'd be, <laughs> <laughs> we'd all be on horseback. Yeah. Um, we're, uh, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're getting by. It's um, it's definitely been a challenge, um, you know. Claire is uh, she's my wife is working really hard with the yoga studio, trying to keep that afloat with all this right she's, now. So we, yeah, we've been really relying on Zoom uh, a lot. I wish I had stock in it, um, but uh, and you're uh, you're teaching on Zoom right now, aren't you? Yes, I am. Yeah, over, over I've got USC. two classes. I had, yeah, I had two. Uh, I've I've got two classes. I had three. Because my friend Trey was, uh, his class, I was kind of pitch-heading for him when he was overseas when the pandemic started. Uh, and he couldn't get home. Is he still there? Or? So, no, he got, he got back. Oh, he, he got he, back. He, okay. And, and what was wild is this was when we should have been locking down. Mm-hmm. He, walked through, he walked through customs like he, it was the, you know, the, he was the queen of parade. There was nothing. Nobody asked him anything amazing where have you been or anything like that that's yeah. that's great that's good to know really, i feel really reassured now with uh with the yeah, you should things. you know as i should but anyway so <laughs> let's let's get right into it just so you kind of have an idea of you know what my podcast is about it's basically a podcast about um uh working actors and writers and directors and and people getting through the daily slog of uh you know um of Hollywood. And, uh, I thought it'd be fun to talk to you and get a writer's perspective. I've talked to, mostly to actors, but, um, I also recently talked to a uh, showrunner, Mark Zachary. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. And, uh, mm-hmm. I, you know, it's nice to get a different perspective on things. And I wanted to kind of dive deep into kind of your process, if you don't mind, and try to figure out sure. how you kind of operate. Um, so, 
Yeah. Why don't we go ahead and just give a quick little rundown of, of who you are, where you're from. Uh, explain yourself, Rick. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, I was born and raised in Vermont uh, and then moved out here when I was um, I an early teenager. And um, and I ended up being involved in theater because I, I didn't do very well with numbers. And so I could only get as far as I wanted uh, as, as a scientist, because I really, I loved the ocean and I loved oceanography. But you I wanted just, to be a scientist? I did. I did. I, didn't know I wanted, that. Yeah, I wanted to, I was, I was, I actually got accepted to Scripps University mm. and to Carnegie Mellon. And I literally flipped a coin on my career wow. in order to figure out where I was going. So, and I don't know if it was the right choice. I never will, but it was one of those choices that you could go either way. So I went and, uh, and I went in as an actor and came out as an actor director because I liked directing better than acting. And I think something in my instinct said, you know, you can't act. But, um, and so I, I relied a lot on being able to do Shakespeare because you can just pose. Right. And, uh, and sword fighting, which is what, you know, you and I have in common. Yeah, a lot of stage combat. A lot of stage combat stuff. Um, what, year, what year was this at Carnegie Mellon? Uh, I graduated in 80. Oh, wow, okay. Right on. Yeah. 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 And uh, it was a good, it was a good class. There were a lot of people in that class that, uh, that became successful, which was nice. As a matter of fact, one of my upstairs neighbors, good buddy, uh, was a man named John Wells. Mm -hmm. And he was, at that point, writing scripts, and I had no idea what he was doing. I thought, well, I'm done with my homework. What's he doing up there typing? Like an idiot. He was uh, making a career, and I was sitting there being in just a, a, a jerk, you know. Right, just, wait, just waiting work. for somebody to pass you a script to work on. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So is he the one who kind of turned you on to being a writer? No, actually, um, about uh, eight or ten years out of out of Carnegie, I was doing political theater in New York, as well as like the you know Shakespeare in the Park and those things. So I right, be right. A legitimate guy during the during the nights and what and, what little theaters were you working in? Oh, remember? oh my gosh, we we would perform in bars. Yeah. In, in, the, in doing the political theater stuff. Yeah, yeah. And we would perform on the streets. So you never did like La Mama or any of those places? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, oh. yeah, no, La Mama. La Mama was there. Uh, I did. And, and also beca I, because I was really good with construction, I would build their sets. Oh, uh, yeah. So that's how I got to know La Mama. So then she, she said, you, you, you boys come in here, you know, yeah. you kids, right? Yeah. But uh, was, we, that was on East Fourth Street, I think, right? Yes, it was. Yeah, it, was it was right across the street from where I studied at the uh, T. Schreiber Studio. That was, oh, right, right. That's, right. right. that's where I studied, and then his studio moved up into Chelsea. It was too close to the uh, Hell's Angels down there. That's right. That's right. It was right <laughs> yeah. down there, wasn't it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Man. But we we were kind of like the artists in residence at a place called the Life Cafe. I remember the Life Cafe. Right, which is where um, which is where that fellow wrote uh, Rent. Uh huh. And and then they used to workshop. They used to workshop rent right next door to us at the Schreiber Studio. Yeah, there so you we'd go. We'd hear that like banging through the walls. <laughs> you know, when we were go. trying to put up like you know <laughs> Sam Shepard scenes. They, yeah. <laughs> you know, what are they doing singing over there? Yeah, they're singing and dancing next door. They're never going to get anywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, and so uh, at a certain point, I realized that I was making more money doing construction than I was in acting, and so I thought. Well, what else can I do? And I've always written. I started with poems and stuff. And the minute I noticed women, I started writing poetry and studying, <laughs> right? Classic. Yeah. And studying, um, studying theater, you spend a lot of time working on words. And uh, I think maybe we also have a come, kind of a familial thing with words in, on my father's side. So I wrote something and sent it to a friend of mine out here. His name is Charlie Peters. And he was a big, big shot in the 80s. And I said, so what do you think? And he goes, you suck. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> he says, you have no idea how to write a screenplay. But your character and dialogue are better than 99% of the people I've ever read. That's interesting. So what were the playwrights that you were really into at the time? Do you remember? Oh, you know, oh God. You know, anywhere from Christopher Fry to uh, I struggled through Mamet because I could not figure him out. I didn't know people like that. But um, I, I always I always I, I was a big fan of Horton Foote. Oh, yeah. Right. Because he was such a, 
a poetic wordsmith. Mm -hmm. and, and I actually got to speak with him when I, when I first moved back out here from Carnegie, uh, from New York City. Uh, I actually got to speak to him because I wanted to direct uh, a wonderful little piece of his called Roots in a Parched Ground, mm -hmm. which it was a piece about, it's kind of a child's version of Lear. It's Boy. really amazing. Yeah, a kid goes through all sorts of hell because his his parents have died or left or something, and he comes in out of the storm. It's really an interesting piece. Yeah, I like Horton Foot. Uh, I had to do a we did a showcase one night, you know, when I was you know young back in New York, and um, you know, a showcase was when you would have all these agents and managers and casting oh, yeah. directors show up, and you know. And we had to put up a scene from one of his uh, short one acts. And I ended up getting my first agent because of that Because scene. of Horton Foot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, he, I, I love him. He wrote Our Town, didn't he? Uh, no, that was Thornton Wilder. No, I'm thinking of Thornton Wilder. Okay, yeah. yeah, but, no, yeah. but Horton Foot, the, the short play that I, that I performed was a Horton Foot play. Sure, and, uh, sure. Yeah, no, and, uh, and, and Horton Foote, of course, he wrote the screenplay for To Kill a Mockingbird. That's right. That's right. right. And, uh, and, and, uh, and I think at that point, um, I was such a Horton Foote fan that I got to meet Robert Duvall at a screening of Tender Mercies. Oh, my God. In the Amazing. village. Yeah, right? And I just went, okay, dude, uh, you did a great job, but how is Horton Foote? And he went, oh, we need to talk about Horton Foote. And it's like... <laughs> Isn't that cool? That's it so was great. so great. I love you, it. They'd rather talk about somebody else. Than, exactly. Than, so we talked yeah. about Horton Foot. So anyway, I based on that, I moved out uh, out west, and I met a fella who um, whose character and dialogue needed work, and but he really knew structure. Mm -hmm. So I figured, well, I can learn structure. So I took class after class. But these were like you know, you buy you buy the class, in, you know, the Bob McKee course, and I bought all the right. books. And I studied and studied and studied all by myself. So I was self-educated. Did you go to those like seminars and all that stuff? I went to, yeah, seminars with, yeah. with Bob, Bob McKee and, and Sid Field. Right. And, and I, you know, and I had the books to go back and forth. I had the bootleg tapes of the Bob <laughs> McKee course. Right. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and I would do construction during the day and teach myself to type at night and, and, uh, between the two of us, and this guy's name is Andy Tennant. Um, his career was just starting off as a director. And so I would come in and help him write things that he would be directing or, or you know, polish it. Right. So that's kind of, I was on his coattails. So as his directing career continued, um, we got asked more and more to rewrite everything that he directed. Oh, wow. So pretty much the list is everything that he's directed, we've done a pass on. Uh, if not, if not one, I mean, uh, you get to Hitch, and we were writers three and thirteen. Oh my God! On Hitch, gosh. right? It had that many. Uh... It had it, that that we know of. Wow. Yeah. You I know, was. We, we were we talking were... about Hitch the other night because my wife she likes to watch uh, Schitt's Creek. Oh yes. And I think that for some reason they play Hitch before every episode of that so you get the tail end of it <laughs> that's great <laughs> right at the, right at the tail end of hitch right at the right at the beginning of of you know oh, when the, for some reason when the dvr <laughs> picks it up um so funny. yeah, that, that's yeah and it cool. was just it was just named uh like uh, one of the 10 best new york times comedies or something yeah i don't know i don't i don't get anything i i i was a uh, kind of a jobber guy on that i don't get residuals nobody else did right. but the original writer because there were so many writers on that right being being a comedy and being a will smith juggernaut it it needed everybody's help yeah yeah for sure so you know I've so, you came, so you came to la you know you had uh you had all that acting uh background from new york you did you did no acting at all when you got out here uh, i actually was asked to sub for the lead in a showcase. Okay. In at some there's a Shakespearean theater in Hollywood someplace. Okay. It's a it's a weird, weird little like a barn, like a Quonset hut type place. <laughs> like around Barney's Beanery. I don't know what, but oh, anyway. Oh, 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 I think it, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, you know that joint. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Right. So I came in, and this is the funniest thing. I came in with like two days of rehearsal. 
to be the lead in the showcase for Carnegie kids who were trying to get agents. Okay. I, I just thought, well, screw it. I'll just be out there. And so I was completely, I mean, you know, my costume included being set on fire. Oh, so <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that's so, safe in the theater, right? It was, it was safe. Well, I basically, <laughs> I get, came in smoking is what I did, you know, just, and, <laughs> and because I didn't care, and this is important for actors, because I didn't care whether or not I got the job. I cared whether or not I was entertaining. I got an agent. Isn't that funny how that works? <laughs> and I turned them down. What agent? <laughs> I don't remember. Somebody <laughs> came up to me and said, I want to represent you. And I said, I'm not acting. I'm oh. doing this for my friends. Wow. I mean, it's, it's the classic case of, you know, the minute you try to leave New York City, you get a job. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah. It's like that. Wow. So, and I don't remember who it was, but... Um, and I think they ended up calling me in as, uh, please, we don't, we don't represent you, but we need somebody who's funny to do an, an interview for Ninja Turtles. Okay. And because they knew that I had, I had a background, I had some martial arts background, they said they're looking for martial artists. So I came in there and I told them, I said, I have an Aikido background, which means that I only respond to being hit. So that's so, that looks awesome on camera. <laughs> that's what I said. So I thought, hold on, I'll tell you what, let's just pretend somebody's hitting me. Yeah. So I, I faked that I was being beaten up uh-huh. for like five minutes. They said, can you come back after lunch? They brought more people to beat you up to, to watch me be <laughs> beat myself up. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, yeah. The the different paths you take in this yeah. industry, man, it's a trip. Yeah. And um, but but I think the thing that I learned out of that, John, is that if if you uh, there's no room for fear. There's right. just no room for fear. Yeah. There's just room for let me see if I can if I can help us make money somehow. Yeah. And and I've always approached that in my writing, in that okay, the goal is not necessarily to steal credit from anybody or to be upset if somebody else takes credit. I don't care who gets the credit. I get paid. We all go to the red carpet. That's right, the right, job. Right. Let's get to that. Let's get to that end. Let's create something yeah. together. And 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 that's why I help other people, and uh, because other people have helped me. Well, you've helped me out tremendously. I mean, I kind of, cons- well, not only are we friends, but, you know, I really do consider you to be, you know, a mentor to me in, in certain aspects. Uh, and I, I thrive on that. I, I, you know, I, I really do that with that. anybody. And one, of these, do one of these days, I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to sneak into your USC class and just kind of be that weird guy in the back of the room who's <laughs> hanging out and like, What's, does that guy yeah. really go to the school? <laughs> Yeah, he looks well, kind of you know, old, you know. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. I we've got some recordings of the uh, class. Yeah, oh, right. Yeah, on, right. I'd, I'd like to take a look at that. But um, you know, and like like I said, you know, you've helped me out a lot. Uh, there's no way I could have gotten through writing. Um, you know, my my web series, The Rolling Soldier. You yeah. really helped me out a lot with that, and and my recent project, The Dark Road. You've been a really great help with that as well. And um, you know. I, one of the things I like to talk about on this, you know, web series is what actors can do to be proactive. And my big, my big thing is, you know, to create content. Mm-hmm. And, you know, one of the hardest things I think actors have a problem with is the writing mm-hmm. and figuring out what, if they're putting themselves in, a, you know, if they're creating a vehicle for themselves to figure out how and what they can do. Um, yes. And then, you know, execute. And um, I was wondering if we could maybe talk a little bit about maybe some tips that you might have for somebody, you know, an actor or, or somebody who's trying to break in, you know, yeah. what they could do to kind of get the ball rolling for themselves. Um, if wow. you're writing for yourself, yeah. you know, what would be, what would be some things that you would recommend? Well, the first, the hardest thing is, and I've used you as a, as an example in my oh, class really? sometimes. Yes, hmm. and people have said, you know, what should I do? I'm not, I don't have a job. When I say, well, create a job, and I've actually used you as an example because you are, in at least in my perspective, a success story in in a in an actor who's transitioned to writing in order to create content that he could be seen in, and you have won awards, dude. So I'm, you know, props. Thanks. Uh, you know, I. I I don't back bad horses, man. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm always back in the winners. So right. here's, <laughs> right. So here's what I suggest. First of all, um, try to find some objectivity about what your strengths and weaknesses are. So some and self-awareness. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, who do I play? I'm, I mean, I've, I've had so many friends that when they were younger, they wanted to be leading men and they didn't realize that they were much more interesting characters. Yeah. Um, and then, then, you know, the ones that, that kind of made that adapt or die switch, they became working character actors. I mean, like my friend, Paul Van, Ben Victor, he wanted to be Romeo, but you know, I was Oops. Romeo. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry, right. pal. I, you know, I'm doing it. Yeah, but, no, it's, uh, it's a, it's a good point, you know, really figuring out who you are and, you know, understanding how you're being seen by other people. Um, you know, because actors, they want to, they want, you know, they want to do everything. They, they're like, oh, I can do that. But yeah. it's perception, isn't it? Right. Well, it, that as well as the fact that, I mean, and I say to this to my writing classes, I mean, the first thing you see on screen or the first thing you see on stage is the thing that you begin to make judgments about. And you do it whether uh, overtly or covertly. You are constantly making assumptions and it goes way back to caveman days when you know somebody's showing up the the person who looks like they could eat you alive is the person to be aware, aware of mm. and um so fight or flight you have a presentation you have a you have a, an image you have a, a, a vibe and so if you can figure out what that is and work on that and say okay well you know i'm maybe i'll do comedy later but I'm a serious actor. Or I've had serious actors like Josh Lucas. This guy was a serious, serious actor, and we had to lighten him up so much yeah. for Sweet Home Alabama because he was, you know, he wanted to be Ray Fiennes, you know? Mm. And it's like, come on, bud, you know, it's a comedy. <laughs> it's and we, and he's, a, he's a funny guy, yeah. but he wanted to, you know, he thought that's the only way to act. And yeah, there are dramatic moments in, in Sweet Home Alabama, but on a whole, you just have to be a constant good energy and trying to be that part of you, right? right. So it's not all of you that, is, you that you're presenting. You're just saying, what are my strengths and what are my weaknesses? And, and I, I have not just one strength, but I have a number of them. So which one do I want to put in my garden? What, what do I want to build a film around? Right. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, if you are, if you are the, the rugged uh, uh, construction type, then build something around that. Don't you have a buddy who comes across as that, who, who's like the worst auditioner in the world? Oh, you, Scott, yes, that Scott, guy is hilarious. And, and that's an example of, yeah. right, you are Mr. Straight Man Dude, and you, pl you play that so well. And he comes across as, I'm going to do that too, but I can't. Which is so funny. Yeah, and no, he's great. His 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 whole shtick, you know, he does this this early auditions, you know, yeah, yeah, series that he's that he's created for himself, and he actually created a uh, he he put it all together and, and did some other and shot some other stuff and made a, a sh like you know like a forty minute short that's up on Amazon now, which is. <laughs> it's hilarious. Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, that's a, he's a prime example of of you know knowing what his strengths are, and, and you know he's very funny. He's got a funny look, but then he can also do the really dangerous redneck guy too. Sure, sure. And you know, I, I I've worked with him a bunch, and uh, he's great. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's a uh, it's it's a fine line, like you know, kind of. <sighs> You know, like I said earlier, it seems like most actors, you know, they they want to be the hero, and they are the hero. It's but there are a million different kinds of heroes. Yeah, it's it's figuring out which hero you are. Yes. Yeah, you know, so, and that's that's something that uh, I think a lot of people struggle with, and I think people, you know, just actors in general, I think struggle mm -hmm. with it because you know they they would they do headshots, and their headshots are not who they are at all. Right, and right. then they come into the office, and it's like. Who the fuck's this guy? Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Right. And it, and it may be one part of you, but it's not it's not your primary color. Right. And play to your primary colors. Right. You know, I agree with that. And right. then so then there's another step in the process right after that. And that is to say, what genre would be really good for me to work on? And you and I have had this conversation before. What genre? You pick the soldier 
genre for your first piece. Mm -hmm. And then you picked a kind of a, a psycho fantasy thing for your second piece. And I think that's fine. I think, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think we, we talked extensively about that because I, I like the idea of, yeah, you're a hero, but you're a hero in this kind of a movie. And you're now you're a hero in this kind of a movie. Right. And it doesn't mean that you're always going to be that kind of hero. Right. Right. Because Sid is not the same guy as whatever the character's name is in Rolling Connor. So, yeah. yeah. He's not um, the same guy. No, not at all. <laughs> Which is great. <laughs> they're both know? damaged guys, but it's, uh, yeah. you know, they're, yeah. they're, they are, they are different. Um, are there any um, books or, yeah. Or things that, that you like to reference when you're, you know, or that you could, you know, kind of suggest to, to people mm -hmm. that are in the, you know, position of trying to create something for themselves that you really. Well, kind of largely, I mean, if you're going to be creating like a webisode series uh, or, you know, the first of many, hopefully for your, your character, um, largely the, uh, the screenplay, the feature length screenplay pieces aren't necessarily structured for that. Right. But a scene is a miniature screenplay with answers not answered. So a scene leaves you, at least if it's going to be part of a series, leaves you with questions. And so writing that, what do I want to share? What do I want to hold back? So what are the secrets? Um, and so the books... The, my my go-to books are Save the Cat. I That book is on my bedside. I read it yeah, all the right. time. I'm constantly referencing that right. book. Absolutely. Save the Cat. And then his third book, which is Save the Cat Strikes Back, in which he answers the problem of the third act. Now, structure is everything. But, um, and so when I'm, because I teach now short film, right, down at USC. It's one of my, one of my graduate uh, classes is short film. And I say that I don't care whether it has a beginning, middle, or end. I care about whether or not you know what the emotional beats are mm. when you're going in. Because if you're going to film this, you have to make sure that you hit this pivot point, right? I'm going to Glendale. I'm got doubling back to Burbank. And then I'm going over the hill to Santa, you know, Santa Clarita. So where are my pivot points? Mm. I don't care about the drive there. You can cut that in editing. But I need to make sure that you hit all those emotional points. So when I write a scene, I make sure that I know what the scene is about. This is about when he learns that his mother is his his sister, you know? Right. That that thing. What is this scene about? Um, so I'm and I'm constantly simplifying. I'm constantly saying, all right, uh, have I gone off the map? And am I now suddenly, you know, downtown LA? instead of Burbank and Glendale. So right. those are the things. So Save the Cat is a, is a wonderful book for that. You can absolutely go to, um, to uh, Story by Bob McKee. You mm -hmm. could read the, any of the Sid Field books. Um, but the most refreshing one, the one that, that really makes it kind of like a menu of what to do as a writer, is Save the Cat. Yeah. I also uh, got a lot out of, um, I think it's called The Writer's Journey by Christopher Volk. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good one. It's yeah. a little a little bit headier than... than it is, uh, it is. Well, see, this... deals a lot with Joseph Campbell's... Hero's absolutely, the myth. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. And that, uh, I actually used to teach the, the Christopher Vogler, and then, um, and so now I do kind of an amalgam mm -hmm. of Vogler and Save the Cat. What's his uh, name? Uh, <laughs> I know I've got it right here. Hold on. What's his damn name? And 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 Blake Snyder. Blake Snyder. Yeah. yeah. Blake Snyder. It's funny. So yeah, here it's right here. Yeah, there it is. Uh, Save the cat strikes back. All right. I'm gonna have to you, get that one. Oh, dude. It well, it, uh, because I was I was using it, and then I, I I read the first book and I said, but wait, this the third. You say basically, and then the third act happens. I'm like, what's that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, the, and, and it's interesting. I, that's John, where I get hung up is on the third act always. Right. Well, this solves the third act. Oh, it, right, I got to get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. It solves the third act. It completely solves the third act. And it was funny is that I, the way I came across Blake Snyder is I was teaching at UTLA, mm -hmm. University of Texas. They have an outreach program here. I was mm -hmm. teaching there and I had a producer come to just audit the class. And she said to me, you're teaching Save the Cat. And I said, what? 
She oh, says, really? you're teaching Dave the Cat. I said, no, I'm teaching everything I've learned by failing is what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. And she says, you should read Save the Cat. And I picked it up and I was, oh, this guy wrote it all down. He wrote it for you. <laughs> he wrote it all down. Yeah. He wrote it all down. It's yeah, so man. Great. Um, and yeah, and then, the, then the other book, the yes. other book that I totally recommend, it was written by the head of the USC writing department. His name is Jack Epps Jr. And it's called Screenwriting is Rewriting. And it tells you what to do after you've done your first draft. And you've sent it around and people say, this sucks. I don't get this guy. Or "Who's? where are the women? Or whatever it is that they give you. Those notes, it mm-hmm. tells you how to, how to apply them systematically. Interesting. That's yeah. called how to, what is it? Screenwriting is rewriting. Screenwriting is rewriting. Okay. Yeah, That's going did, in the yeah. show notes for sure. Yeah. You definitely need I'm to gonna, do that. Yeah, everything's going in the show notes. Um, okay, and here's cool. the thing. And as far as these books are concerned, buy them, uh, buy them on, uh, on Amazon, but, uh, buy them as Kindles because the, 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 the writers always get more money from Kindle. Yeah. Really? I, I did not know that, but basically it's because there is no cost of printing a book. Ah, uh, yes. So they get more money. Right, right, right. That's yeah. Great. So that's, that's a good point. All right. Um, so you want to hear some stories? Is it? Yeah, let's do some stories. <laughs> like all of a sudden my brain just went. <laughs> it's I'm okay. Hearing, I'm, I'm hearing things out in the other room. I also come at it with a lot of energy. I have yeah, a, a, I have a, I've good. been known to have a great deal of passion. Well, you are a passionate man, right? <laughs> um, yeah. So, okay. So we've covered books and, and, yeah. um, and we've covered, you know, figuring out self-awareness, you know, when you're, when you're writing for yourself. Um, I recommend talk. therapy as well too, dude. You know, oh, course, therapy yeah. and and any kind of introspection. Yeah, I'm I'm like, go ahead, get into the ugly part. What's your What's your process like? When do you start writing? Here's how I work. Okay, because it's it's really fun. I'll go to the I'll go sit someplace alone without the without the the phone. Like a and coffee I shop get, or something. Uh, well, for me, um, quite often it's just out by the pool. Oh, cool. Okay, <laughs> right. You don't have to have a pool, but. Some, you know, quite often it's out by the pool. Right. Um, or I'll sit in my car. I remember, uh, but I'll, I'll grab a composition book. Okay. And everything that's going on in my head, I write down. The stupidest stuff in the world, I write down. So kind of like, you're kind of like journaling? I'm free verse journaling. So it's kind of like the Julia Cameron morning pages kind of thing where you're Absolutely. like I'm just, the artist way stuff? Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, so this, yeah. we call this in, in screenwriting terms, we call this ideation. Okay. So any, and ideas come and you, if you leave them alone. Now I also recommend, and this for, for people who can't meditate, I recommend a, uh, a an isolation tank. Self de- uh, the deprivation thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because here's, here's the thing. One of the, one of the worst things for a writer's mind is a distraction. Oh yeah, and everything is a distraction. That's the same so, thing with being an actor. I mean, yeah, everything. You, that, and I'll tell you this. Okay, so um, my my good old buddy Holly Hunter mm-hmm. was deaf in one ear, and so she had to work really hard to be able to hear what people were saying, uh-huh. which gave her a sense of focus and attention to the other actor. Wow, that made her career. Because she didn't have that distraction going on. I'm not uh, saying plug your ears while you act. <laughs> but no, that, I, I've never heard that story. That's a good one. Yeah, like no, she's, yeah. She, was, she was deaf in one ear. I can't remember which, but there you go. Right on. And, right. And they, they actually said to her at some point, do you want to try to get that fixed? And she said, no. Wow. Yeah. So she'd gotten used to that. So anyway. So Self-deprivation IDH, tanks. Self-deprivation tanks are pretty outstanding just anyway. Now, where does one find one of these, Rick? Well, I know that there's one at the corner of Topanga and, and Ventura Boulevard. Okay. I'm right? going. I'm, I'm, we should go <laughs> I together. Swear, dude, it's so great. You get I've And you own it. it. It's, not like, it's not like you're trapped in there. You are in charge of it. Yeah. So, and I, I recommend that as kind of it, – it is – forced meditation what is it like the saltwater bath kind of thing where you're floating? floating on your back with the and your ears are plugged and it's the same the water is the same temperature as your body so uh-huh. you cannot feel anything wow and so it's nothing but mr brain wow. which can be scary at first oh yeah i would imagine a lot of people would have a really really hard time with that 
But then you turn around and it's been three hours and you've gone all sorts of really interesting places with your mind. Wow. All sorts of, so then, and, and then, you, and first of all, then you're calmer when you walk mm-hmm. out, your blood pressure is lower and you have thought. Right. And you have, this is focused thinking and it's really hard to have focused thinking. I get maybe like, you know, four or five minutes of it a day. Yeah, man, it's tough. You know, it's finding the time to just sit and be quiet. I mean, I try to meditate every day. I do transcendental meditation. I try to, you know, blocking off those two 20 minute sessions. You know, I'm lucky if I can get one in, Yeah. you know, Um, and I do find that that helps a lot. And, but what happens to me a lot of the time is when I'm meditating, those ideas will come in, but the idea is kind of like to let those ideas come through, pass, and then they're done. Right. And sometimes right. it's hard to remember those and you don't want to break your meditation because you don't want to, you know, but, uh, there've been times I've been like, Oh, that's really good. And I'll write something down. Yeah. Um, all right. So, so and the good ones, the good ones stay, the good ones stay. Yeah. So you find some quiet time and you, you go, you dive in deep and you write it all down. Right. Um, and you just write down whatever you, you, whatever's coming to you, just like kind of like, you know, that, that diarrhea on the page, just getting it out there and, or whatever's locked up in the head and just letting it come out. And then it's there and your mind's clear, but then you also might have some good ideas that you've written down. Is right. That how it goes? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I'll, I'll, if, if I am doing my job, I'm keying into what other people are also keying into. I'm keying into either a section of society. Mm-hmm. Now, I can, you can come at it from a number of different ways. You can say, what? You can say, well, what kind of film do I want to write? Yeah. What genre do I want to choose? What kind of characters are interesting to me? Have I met somebody who's fascinating that I would like to, to represent? Right. And would I like to go into who, what, what their world is? And once I have a hero, what's the person that will, that will push that person's buttons the mm-hmm. most? So that would be the person's uh, catalyst. So I'm looking for universal themes or theories that are happening. At one point, and I'll tell you a short story, I was taking my daughter to swim lessons, and I would start early in the morning because she swam before before high school. And I would I started noticing the people in the world that nobody sees, and they were very more or less invisible. Mm-hmm. And then I realized that anonymity is a big fear in the world. But there are some people who are shy and and would like to remain anonymous. Right. And so I thought that's something that's going on in my world. And so then I created a pilot for a series that I, had ri- that I wrote about a young man who became invisible, basically a young version of the invisible man, but without right. the evilness. Right, right. So he became kind of a, 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 a reluctant superhero in that. Right, yeah. Which I was remember, pretty... I, remember, I think I remember you telling me yeah. about this a while yeah. back. Uh, probably. Um, yeah, yeah. We um, have known each other for a long time. I think I, re- I think I read it. Yeah, you might have. It's called um, Visible. Yeah, I, I thought it was really good. And and then once I've done that, once I've got that all figured out, I go through and go, what's interesting and what's not? Mm-hmm. And what and what are other people thinking about? And there will be recurring themes. There'll be something recurring. I want to do something about a garbage man. Okay, well then let's let's create a character about a garbage man. Yeah. And what does that garbage man need? What is missing in that person's life? Right? Is it respect? Is it is it cleanliness are they are they super crazy about that or right or what or uh are they do they feel like they're digging through humans remains you know so is there a story there where is the story right so that's i I look for the story then do you also do you do you kind of check out what's trending at the moment? Like, are you like in in society, uh, are you keeping an eye on things and like, Oh, that's interesting. You know, let me bring this in or, or or is it just, or is it mostly random stuff that you kind of come up with? I, I read, I read the newspapers every day and I do them online, but I read the newspapers. And then I also, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a rabbit hole uh, Googler, I'll just find something and just keep going and going and going, and I'll spend some time doing that. I ran across a story uh, about th- that I, I don't want to give it away because I'm writing it, mm-hmm. but a story about a law in a str- in one of the two or three states that is so outrageous 
that I thought, oh my God, I have to do a movie about this. Yeah, and it, and, and it's a domestic law that you said, are you kidding? Is <laughs> this is a thing? So yeah. I I look for interesting facts. Those sometimes pop up. Are there certain things that you've seen that, you know, kind of keep recurring, like certain trends that keep recurring that you're like, you always have your eye on being like, you know, yeah. that's going to be the next, the next like genre or the next topic yeah. that, that comes up or. Well, it's, it's really interesting, John, in that, in that, well, there, there, there are the universal genres and that's, they're always going to be either happening or not. But there are also ideas out mm-hmm. there that I've had that I've gone through writing and then somebody, and just as I finish writing the script, someone comes out with a film that is that. Yeah, it's like because we universal are, consciousness. Yeah, we are all part of that, the, the, yeah, the zeitgeist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. Or I've been too far ahead. And then three years, and they say, oh, no, we're not making, we're not going to do that. And three years later, there it is. Yeah. But having said that, I never ever blame anybody for for being being in the right place at the right time. Right. You just try. Right. And and I never just have one project, John. I always have like six. Wow. And they're simultaneously going so, on at the same time. See, I yeah, can't um, do that. I can't. Um, I can't juggle like that. My brain well, just has to, I'm like one of those guys that has to be focused on one single thing or else, oh yes. or else always, I, I can't function. Well, one will take the front burner and then the three yeah. or four are in the back burner. And I've actually, I've actually gone from writing one of my own scripts to writing a script with a partner to writing with another partner. And it's, I literally sometimes just change hats. Do they ever bleed into each other? No, not necessarily. I mean, it's such it's such a it's such a craft, right? And the, and the art is it comes in as like a like a secret sauce mm-hmm. later on. Mm-hmm. So I mean, like if if you talk about you take a look at uh, at uh, even, even Sweet Home Alabama, it's such a formulaic piece right, that once right. you worked out the craft of the whole piece, then you say, okay, now where do I get a moment of art? Mm-hmm. You know, so I'll have a moment of art in there in the in the coon dog cemetery homage to my dead dog, right? Right. <laughs> See the movie; it's there. Yeah, yeah. And so you get a moment in there, but basically, you're trying to craft a journey for the viewer to go on, and that's why it get, comes back to those pivot points. Where are those pivot points? Um, and and no bleeding over, not necessarily so much. Um, a lot of the things that I write are similar. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but I literally I will get up and walk away, and then come back and go. Okay, now this project, as if it's a new day. You have to kind of right. <laughs> I mean, I guess, you know, I've been like that with music, where I, I I'm working on one thing and I get so tired of hearing it that I'll start working on another you know piece, and it still have that one kind of in the back. But I then what happens to me is I get I fa- see my problem is I fall in love with the things. Yeah. I don't want to put them down. So yeah. when I pick up a new one, there's this awful feeling like oh, I'm totally ignoring that other yeah, one. I'm betraying. I'm betraying my, and I'm yeah. cheating on it. <laughs> yeah. I am of the of the mindset that it will come. And I've had scripts that, that studios have called up and they own the script or something. And they say, it, I know it's been six years, but you know we want to dig this out of the archives and redevelop it. I mean, and I've, I'd say, what? script was that and, <laughs> and and then my next thought is if you don't get me to rewrite it please get someone to rewrite it yeah because it can't be any good <laughs> <laughs> oh man and and so but things keep coming and i and like you with music i'm sure that you take pieces that you've worked on and plug them into new songs oh yeah totally Right. So all the time, I constantly, I'm constantly grabbing bass lines from other tracks that, you know, fit in really well with that. That's right. And that, you know, that's, that's nice, but, um, steal from yourself. Yeah. You got to steal from the best. (laughs) (laughs) Um, what about genres? What, what's the, what genre do you feel like you're the most comfortable writing in? It's not, it's not, although I'm a funny man, Mm -hmm. it's not, comedies it's dramas with human comedy in it right 
Those because, are the best. Right. Um, and to the point of absurdism. I mean, I will actually go too far for the, for the piece. Mm -hmm. And the tone will go, what is this? Because I, I can't, there's a kind of a law in our house. If there's a joke to be said, you have to say it. Right. That's <laughs> a good must, one. You must make the joke. That's good. <laughs> it's terrible. It doesn't work. I don't well know if I, I don't know if I want to do that in my house. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's good though. That's a good <laughs> exercise to have. Yeah. No, and, and I, I always say, you know, you got to you have to sleep sometimes, so be careful. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, as as far as genres are concerned, I I mean, it's even even the uh, the the secret because we just that's going to be coming out. Yeah. Can we talk about that? Sure, 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 sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I can talk all about it. Awesome. Um, but even in that, uh, it was tonally it was it was very very kind of like serious life stuff, and I thought life is not just serious. Right. Life is not just silly, but it's not just serious. So how do we change the tone of this as well as change, you know, as much of the story as we can in order to make it so that it was palatable um, to everyone? Because that's the thing. I mean, my, when I first started getting involved in this, my partner had already been involved in it for a while. And it was, uh, it was originally a script written by uh, Becca Brunstetter and the producer... Um, and they did a, a, a bang up job taking this uh, book about, you know, like a psychological theory and the turning law it into attraction. Into, yeah. The law of attraction. Right. And, and they actually kind of distilled a story out of nothing. So they spun straw into gold in my opinion. And, uh, but then they got lost. And so when my partner and I came in, um, we were able to say, let's make this much more human, much more relatable, much more, uh, much less precious. And so, and that was a, that was, that was a joy for me to be able to, because, because I said, because you always say, what's it about? And, and it, it, to, to not to, not to diminish it, but it really was a lot like, you know, Bill and Ted, where it's like, be excellent to each other. Right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's universal. Everybody's, and every religion, if it's a good religion and people stick to it, it's all about being excellent to each other. Be nice. Try being nice and see what happens. Just try that. Yeah. Try not being a jerk. Yeah, don't be a jerk. And, and what's really interesting is that it, it builds upon itself. You actually find yourself like driving nicer and less aggressively. And well, there's a you, synchronicity to it. Indeed. You know, mm -hmm. where, you know, one good deed leads to another or one, you know, and then it feeds one back. Really, one bad thing leads to another also. Yeah. You so, know, and karma works both ways in my totally. opinion. Yeah. There's so, no, there, it, there's, there's no line. Right. You know, exactly. it's, it's, it's all the same soup. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's, um, we read that book. Um, well, I read the secret. I remember when it came out, um, like I bought a copy of the DVD for Claire. Sure. Where they interview, I think all the people that were involved in, in, uh, her, what's her name? Rhonda Bynes. Is that her name? Rhonda, right. Yeah. Rhonda. Um, yeah. they, you know, all the people that kind of helped her kind of formulate this, this idea. And the one uh, person that we really kind of connected to the most was Esther Hicks, who right. would channel Abraham, the, right. the entity that would give her information about the law of attraction. Um, you know, it's very interesting stuff. It's a little out there, um, but I think there's, there's good lessons in there. And well, that's the thing is I always say, well, what's the, what's the, what's the good takeaway from this? I don't care whether or not it, it comes from a talking rabbit. What's the good exactly. takeaway from this? Yeah. You know, what's, how can we help? Yeah. yeah. I just, I'm, I spent too much of my life being a negative guy. And, uh, that's and it's not just a blood I, type. I don't think, I don't feel like you're negative at all. I feel like you've got, See? A, I, I feel like you have a very dark sense of humor. <laughs> here, here. I, don't, I don't think you're negative. Uh, well, never, there was, I've there never was, seen you negative. You're no, there was some anger, anger in my youth. Oh, well, anger I'm, in I'm my still youth. still going through that. <laughs> It's so true, but but yeah, and there and you're not alone, you and Claire, and you're not alone in 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 looking at that and saying that helps. Oh, totally. That helps. That helps the, the world. 
that kind of thinking. And I, and I, I'm very appreciative. I didn't see the film, that original documentary film. Well, I think until we after saw, I was finished, we <laughs> saw the original version. The original version had Esther Hicks in it. And then right. they made another version where they cut her out. And I'm not sure why. Yeah. I, I, I don't know why. Maybe it was conflicting with her books. Could have been, you know, okay. because it has, you, you have to figure out how to make a living out of this. Sure. Stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. You know. So, yeah, I mean it's interesting stuff. What's what's the status on that film now? It's uh, like pretty much every other film in Hollywood. It's been wow. delayed. They're not going to um, try to do some kind of maybe. No, they, they don't want to do an online thing yet. They're yeah. going to. We're hoping for the fall. And oh, man, uh, I hope so, man. I I think that needs to be in the theaters. I think people yeah. need to see it. I, I just I think that's just a home run for you. I really hope that happens. Yeah, well, I will say this. It's really interesting because we had a number before the uh, the pandemic. We had a number of screenings and uh, people would come out. And, they, and this is not me blowing my own horn. This is a, the no, a, blow a, your horn. No, about the power of positivity. Right. That people would come out and say, oh, my God, I need to change my life. Oh, that's great. And I'm like, nice. <laughs> 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 How'd you like the film? <laughs> that's great. And it stars Katie Holmes, right? Yeah, Katie Holmes and Josh Lucas. Josh Lucas, yeah. And uh, Jerry O'Connell. Who I worked with Jerry O'Connell. Right, Jerry yeah. O'Connell. So did I. I worked with Jerry O'Connell in uh, Sliders. Sliders. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, I worked yeah. on uh, Crossing Jordan with him. Oh, yeah. He's a great yeah. guy. He, great. Uh, you know, we went late into the night and he made sure that he was there for everybody's coverage. Nice. Uh, which is nice. something that does not happen. Nobody does that, but the but the real the real actors. Yeah, he stayed for everybody's coverage. It was great, really, really sweet guy, really great guy. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing that man for sure. That's definitely going to be on our list of things right. to do and see. Yeah, that's a good date yeah. movie for me and Claire. It's to go a on. good date for movie for everybody. Yeah, yeah, for and sure. and not only that, but I always say, I said when I first when I first saw the the rough cut, um, I said, oh my god, this is going to sell so much Chardonnay. <laughs> Oh my, yeah, exactly. That's how, that's how it should be booked, you know. And that's yeah. how they should they should bill it like you know. They should maybe get your create, Chardonnay. Yeah, they should create a Chardonnay around it. Um, you know, I had some questions from some people online that I wanted to ask. Oh, that's you. cool. Um, let me see. Let me just bring one. I'm surprised that anybody anybody thought well because there really there's only one series credited out there for me because the rest of the films are all uncredited. Really? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's the Writers Guild. For for years, the Writers Guild would not allow me credit because I was working with a director, and uh, and then they had they had a different standard for people who were already getting a, a a credit on a film as a director or a producer. You had to prove substantially greater than sixty five percent change, uh, and there's there was really no reason to do that. There was no yeah. reason to do that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, well, you get paid and then that's, that's it. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. But I, I also built, you know, I got to the point where like on hitch, I built a couple of bonuses into my yeah. second, the second time I, so, and they were based on box office. So whenever, and so that's a risk. I mean, if it tanks, you don't get a bonus. Right. 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 But I got three bonuses in like the first week. So that was a good year. That was a great year. Yeah. Well, that movie was gangbusters, man. I remember when it was. That was right around the time I think I met you. Was it? Good. It could have been. Let me see. Because I I was thinking about it earlier today. I think we've known each other for almost 15 years. No, no, no. More. More. Are you sure? When when did you? You started. Here's here's a little back. Here's some backstory. So I I used to teach uh, kids martial arts and uh, Rick's son, Jack, was one of my students. And he started, what what year did he start with me? He was four. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) And he's 21 now, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah, but dude, you were such a positive influence on him. Above, you, you can... A dad is only a dad, but when you get like uncle figures out there Mm -hmm. and uncle figures that are all about like respect each other and take care of yourself. And this is, you know, all that stuff. You were such a strong influence on him. Uh, It was really, really, I'm, I'm like, well, no, this guy's all right. (laughs) I'm okay with him. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, you know, it kind of goes yeah. both ways, you know, when you're, yeah. you, when you're teaching a martial arts class, you know, I got, I got so much out of the kids, you know, yeah. I, I hope they, you know, I, I just I tried to give them back as much as they were given me. Um, but, uh, yeah, God, that's amazing. But, um, okay. So l- l- let me get to one of these questions from, uh, sure, from, uh, Twitter. Uh, I had a guy named, uh, Jarrett Matthews is asking, uh, he would like to know where he can find examples of how gunfight scenes are written. Ooh, okay. Well, is here's what pr- is there yeah. a process to that? Or- yeah. Well, um, the it makes sense. I would think of the gunfighting film that you'd like to see and and look up because the scripts are all online. Yeah. I mean, pretty much every script is online. So if you fi- if there's a gunfighting scene that you like, the scripts are online. And if you can't find the, the actual, if the scene isn't written with any detail, you might see if there is a, uh, uh, what they call a shooting script, mm-hmm. which is the last script that is, uh, is the one that the script supervisor had. And usually there are notes. And that talks basically talks about the choreography of those scenes. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I would search online. And if not, you can go to the Writers Guild. The Writers Guild has jillions of things for people who are non, non-guild members. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Right. No, I, I, when, I was, uh, when I was a non-guild member, I, I was having an issue with uh, uh, the Star Trek people stole one of my ideas. Uh-oh. Yeah. And so I called them up and I said, look, I'm not a member, but this is what's happened. And they said, oh, yeah, get in line, buddy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that was during one season of Star Trek, okay. The Next Generation, okay. where they actually didn't pay attention to the scripts that they were reading. Um, and they would they would just either accidentally or overtly I don't know mm-hmm. those people were replaced mm-hmm. they were borrowing from things interesting so yeah I know right yeah. it's a long it's another long story yeah I bet man <laughs> um, what's your take now on the quality of television compared to film as far as writing goes well when um, when when the Marvel juggernaut moved into the neighborhood and kind of dominated the swings. Um, a lot of good writers thought, okay, where can I go to get things produced? So that's, and then that at the same time, the streaming services started to become larger and larger. So all the good writers have really rolled over into, into the streaming services. And as long as people don't get complacent, people meaning writers don't get complacent, you're going to get magic stuff out there, like from Breaking Bad to Better Call Saul to, oh, yeah. to I mean, even even some of the stuff that I've seen in um, in these limited series, you know. And, did you see and, Outsider? Did you watch uh, that? I did not see that. It's pretty no. good. Yeah, I mean, I, I was watching. Um, what's the one? Watchmen was good for yeah, you know, I haven't, I couldn't, for a while. That was like I, I didn't strong. get I didn't connect to that yeah. to the pilot, but everyone's like you got to keep watching. Yeah, um, it was it was pretty interesting. I, yeah, I'm gonna take a look at that one. Right. Like for me, like I, when I started noticing how good television writing was getting was right around the time The Sopranos was out. Oh yeah, way back then. Yeah, I mean that for me was like, yeah, I couldn't wait right for that show to come on. I mean, it was like an event. There, there are there, but there've always been there. There's always been a trickle of like the Stephen Botchkos, uh, you know, and the and even and the John Wells. Thank you right. very much. Yeah. Who yeah. who've run that, and they've been the quality TV. Where over here is the entertainment, and over here is the drac. Right. But then the, the streaming services were were thing. They they ended up with a lot of money. Yeah. So they yeah. brought money to it, and they would kind of develop pieces. Right. Now, I mean, I've got a series with A and E now that they they just you know they're they're selling it. They're going to go out and sell it, and and if I secret it right, yeah, <laughs> they'll buy the whole lock, stock, and barrel, and say, okay, now I'll be suddenly writing the entire season. You'll be in the writing room. Yeah, yeah. go right away, or I'll walk away and just take the money <laughs> and, and then go yeah. buy an RV. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess you know a lot of writers they've they've. 
TV's just opened up a lot of opportunity for him. Or am I wrong in no. saying that? Or no, is it no, just no, the no. same guys writing everything? No, no, no. No. You're, okay. no. Um, here's, here's, there's been a great deal of, and this is for everybody out there, and especially because you should, the students I get are from all over the world, every gender, every culture. Mm-hmm. And I am so glad about that. Because then, then we don't suddenly have we don't we no longer have a thousand Dick Van Dyke shows, right? We suddenly have uh, uh, my my friend Bio Akinmefe or whatever his name is is in that that uh, I'm I'm in love with Bob Loves Abishola. Uh, Bob whatever. Loves Abish. Yeah, right. uh, one of my uh, one of my oh, I've got a lot of friends that are on that show now. From I'm in a web series called Consequences, and it's about um, it's about you know African scam artists who. Basically, <laughs> turn, who basically turn into Robin Hood, and uh, I'm like the token white guy on the show. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. All those guys work on that. Bob's Bob Hart's yeah. Abishola. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I completely went off no, the rails. No, too. No, no. Here's a, <laughs> no. But so my I, friend- it's like trying me. I'm the worst. I go flying <laughs> into completely different <laughs> avenues. So when people listen to this, I, I'm sorry. It's got a apologize in advance is, is there a map so no, no there's no bio for fucking math. <laughs> bio is an actor in that and he was in my graduate uh screenwriting class okay and so this is a this is a, a sense where this gentleman n- was interested in learning about scripts in order to become a better actor yeah which i thought was really smart That's and super uh, smart yeah because i mean it it, uh, it only helps it only helps to, to analyze I mean, I what's understand. supposed to happen. I don't understand why more actors don't do that. I don't know if it's because I come from kind of an old school training program where we literally would break down the script. Yes. You know, like we go through Arthur Miller plays and literally right. just like score the hell out of them and just break it right. down. Um, maybe it's just the way I was trained. No, no, no it's all right. There's yeah. there. Th- there are people that that are actors and then there are people that want to be celebrities and, and, and very, you know, and, and it's the amalgam of the two that would be the best. Sure. sure. And you get your Tom Hanks's and your, and your, uh, and your, uh, Kate Blanchett's. Yeah. That kind of thing. So, um, to, to that, we get a ton of diversity now in writers rooms. Um, and and they may be first generation writers, mm-hmm. which is hard. So then, quite often, what happens is many of the showrunners are seasoned, but they're still they're still you know Caucasian because right. that that generate that that gender or uh, sorry that whatever we are or that right. race, if you will, was was raised by their parents who were white. Right. And so now now what I'm trying to do is is I'm encouraging everybody of every color in my classes to go, okay, you can do this. And I want to see your voice on screen because it's the only way to save society in my mind. Right. Yeah. I mean, you could say the same about, you know, females, uh, writers and, and filmmakers too. There, you know, the, there aren't many showrunners there. It's starting to grow. Yes. Where, um, you know, women are, are taking more of a, a lead role in those things. Um, but that's interesting. Yeah, you have to fight this, the, you know, sexism and racism every day. And yeah. and I otherwise it's just boring. I think you well, know, it, it's boring, and it's and it's there's so many talents that get wasted. You know, people yeah, go, yeah. "Well, I I tried," and then you move on. Right. I, I say, you know, don't. I always tell people, don't quit. Don't ever quit. Don't yeah. quit what you're doing. Take a break now and then. Take a yeah. break, yes, yeah. in order to get your head focused. But don't quit. No. You know, yeah. shift gears a little bit. Try something else. And it's like when you when you started in with the Rolling Soldier, you had you were like bumping up against the wall, bumping up against the wall, oh, and, then, and then and then right one thing after another. It I mean, was. literally, it was like yeah. you know our business yeah. was about to to crash, and right. you know, there was a tragedy with one of my actors, and the list went on and on and on with that thing. So true. But you got into this is a new service, and now every day there's something else that opens up that can represent you as an actor. Yeah. And then you get seen from one thing, and then you get put into something else. Mm. And it's not about moving up; it's just about a career. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. 
you know, it's like, and um, I'll, I'll work with somebody and then I'll send them like, I, I'll recommend uh, acting teachers mm-hmm. to, you know, to them and say, go here because this well, that's, guy- that's, yeah, that's, that's a good thing I wanted to talk about with you. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's really important that an actor or, or a writer yeah. knows how to write for an actor. Yeah, here, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. I think they should be in acting classes. Sure. And yeah, no, you, you should know because I mean, it, you should be able as a writer, you should be able to act out every character, and you should make sure that you you've looked into. You know how an actor prepares mm-hmm. is a great way to study the character that you're going to write. Right. So you say, okay, so what is it? Who is this human? What what drives them? What is, what are their hopes? What are their fears? You know, what do they eat for breakfast? Just know that stuff. Yeah. Uh, all my that students, stuff helps too when you go into like a pitch meeting. Absolutely. Yeah. There's, there's so much that that's, that goes into it. You know, it's yeah. like you need to know every little thing. Yeah. Um, but, so we're coming it, up on an hour here, buddy. How's how are you doing for time? You know, I'm. <laughs> I you can trim all you want out. No, of no, I don't trim anything. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll oh, trim Maybe like you know the long pregnant pauses, but I'm not going to trim anything <laughs> from this. There's no, there, you're talking to me. There are no pauses. <laughs> um, <laughs> You should see my Zoom classes, man, with these kids. Well, you should They're record just, them. Why aren't you? You need to I do. record I'll, those. I'll send you and a still. You need to sell them. I don't know if you brought yeah, in trouble with USC with that. I, that yeah, be, right. I buy was, your class. You're fired. I yeah. know. That's all right. I got a whole career on Zoom now it's, during the <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> well, it's you know, it's I don't do it down there for the money. I do it because uh, somebody did it for me, and I, I love I love teaching. I love helping people be better at something that they're not. Yeah. You know, it's, it's always, it's always fun to do that. But yeah, no, I've got a, I've got a screenshot of my class one time. That's one of the students sent me and I went, Oh my God, everybody's laughing. That's good. <laughs> because if you, if you, it's, well, you know that if you get somebody uh, to drop their defenses, they can listen better. Yeah, for sure. And absorb, you know, when they're not focusing on what their next question is rather yeah, than really. listening to what the person is saying to them. Yeah, for sure. So what tell me, say? tell me what else is going on with you, man. What What are you into uh, nowadays? What's uh, what you excited? Okay, we're doing a rewrite on the on the uh, the murder mystery in Bora Bora piece that uh, that we've had around for years. Okay, it's really it's really a fun. It's basically it's body heat in Bora Bora. Oh, I was just talking about body heat with somebody. Know, right? It's such yeah. a good movie. Yeah. It is such a good movie. It's so much fun. Yeah. And uh, and it's one of those ones where you go, oh, this is so messed up. Yeah. But isn't it pretty? But isn't it messed? My my partner and I quite often what we'll do is we'll say, where would we like to go film? <laughs> yeah. And then we start writing a movie about that. Yeah, it's it's, so it's not funny. a bad way to do things, you know. No, it's like, well, let me see what we have. We have the uh, the true story of the Pied Piper. And I thought, well, yeah, I would love to do a period piece set in, in the Austrian Alps. And yeah, let's do that. Interesting. Right? Yeah. So there, I, I'm telling you, I have hundreds of projects. And, I, and so I encourage all of your listeners, if there are any left at, after an hour, I encourage all of your listeners to do as many things as you can. Just do as many projects as you can. Just get it and, out there. Yeah. yeah. And just keep yeah. at it. And, you know, people do showcases and, and even if you get burned out auditioning, get yourself in a play, keep doing what you do. Yeah. Because the only person who's stopping you from doing what you do is you. Yeah, totally. Really. I mean, you know, you go, you, even if you're just like, I'm bringing on the, I'm bringing on the drinks in a tray for in the middle of some, somebody else's showcase. Yeah. You're at least out there. Yeah. You're still and, and then, you know, then your clothes will be on fire and you'll get an age. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm going to try that. I'm going to light myself on fire at my next audition. See if that works. <laughs> it's been weird though, doing the auditions uh, lately. You know, I mean, I've, I've, I've done tons of you know things where I've had to submit myself on tape. Right. Well, but, let me talk about the other side of that because as, as a writer, in, and being with the director, yeah. I've been able to, I've been privy to tapes, right? So, you know, when, when you audition and get yourself on tape and that tape goes to the set or that tape goes to, to, the, uh, to the development office or whatever it is, I'd say the ones that stand out are the ones that are calm, confident, and have a solid take. 
It doesn't have to be the right one. It's just a solid take. And then if there's, and then if the casting director gives you a direction and you take that direction, then that says another thing. Yes, you can take direction. You can make an adjustment because then it means that, okay, you're open and available enough to be able to adjust what you've got. And I, I say, don't worry about the lines so much. And and 95% of the time, there's there's a look in, in the director's mind. I'm just looking for, you know, I need this, I need this giant, fat, funny guy. Right. Okay, fine. Let's find that. And of course, they'll send you a 3,000 giant, fat, but at least, funny guys. <laughs> right. And, and John. And then and John. Who's, sipping through it. And you're like, <laughs> what's that guy doing in here? <laughs> right. But here's the thing. Then the next time it comes in, you go, oh, crap, I remember this person. Yeah. I remember this person. I've, I've had, I've uh, said to, to uh, casting directors, you need to hire this person because I worked with them. I saw them or I know them, mm. or wasn't this that person that did that? It's really not that big of a town. So the more places that you drop your seeds, the more your garden will grow. Do, the, do writers often speak with casting? Writers don't speak with casting as much uh, in features, but they uh-huh. do. Uh, writers are producers on on features. I mean, on series. On series, yeah. On series. So casting gets involved. They get they get to choose. They talk about it. Also, when you're a writer, I'll write for someone. Mm-hmm. So if I'm writing, I'll say this is this is a Nathan Lane thing, you know? Yeah. Or, yeah. or a John Tag thing. Yeah. I I will have this person in mind when I'm when I'm doing it. So yeah, the, you know, networking is not just about can you give me a job. Networking is about do you know who I am? And let's talk about fly fishing. Right. And then later on, I'll go, that was that guy. And at least I know he can fly fish. Yeah. Cool. I've got a fly fishing movie, you know? There you go. So, so rather than focus, because and I, I remember from being an actor that it was always about how am I going to get work? How am I going to get? And that was a blinder. Yeah, totally. But also, it also was a red flag to anybody I would talk to oh, if, yeah. if I was that guy. So I discovered that if I, if I talked about anything but acting i had a leg up yeah and uh, you know i would say so, you know have you have you been skiing this year you know right right and then right. we're talking about skiing right that kind of thing where'd you grow up yeah. that kind of stuff. yeah yeah it's, it's and you find no, I mean, you know a lot of people you know a lot of people from jersey oh yeah <laughs> so there you go yeah, right. totally. <laughs> all right man all right well, man, listen. i've wasted too much of your time oh, no man this has been amazing um where can people find you are you, yeah. uh, are you on the uh, webs? Are you on the... Uh, no, I, I'm so not. I'm uh, I'm on MeWe. I'm trying to avoid Facebook because it just sucks my brain out. Uh, I, uh, yeah. Not a fan I of think it. I, what? Yeah, I'm not, no. I'm just not a fan of it anymore. No, the only thing it's good for is, is remembering people's birthdays. That's about it for me. But, yeah. and uh, But I am on Twitter. I love what Twitter. I, I'm on Twitter. I'm... Uh, who am I? What's my I'll put, name? I'll put your handle on there. I'll make yeah, sure that people yeah, find I'm you. On, I'm on Twitter. So, yeah, if, you know, and I'm constantly posting the most uh, psychotic things on there. I have some really, I have some really, I have high friends in places. I have some really good, good people that I follow. Um, and, and you can find my Uncle Van Dyke in there. Oh, yeah. yeah right. Van Dyke Parks. Right. Uh, so, Beach Boys fame and other amazing that's right. artists. Yeah. And Randy Newman and Randy. Harry Nilsson. Mm-hmm. We talk music forever, but that's another podcast. That's another podcast. It is, yeah. man. Will you do me a favor and give yeah. my love to your family? Because I they, will, man. They, you too. You can, they're, you my, know, they're my faves. Thanks, man. Like, you know, I know we kept uh, teasing that we'd all get together and, and have dinner soon, but <laughs> we have to be the pandemic, you <laughs> yeah. know, it's. We just, <laughs> Hold on, we we'll get a mask over here. We'll just, yeah, yeah. We'll just well, it might take some time. You know, I'll be uh, right over. Oh, you got a good one. I've been, yeah, I know. I've been running around with a bandana over my head. I look like, yeah, no, uh, I, like I uh, this. Butch Cassidy. Yeah. Um, well, Rick, I wanted to thank you, man. This has been great. And, uh, you know, I, I wish nothing but the best. You've been an incredible, um, you know, mentor to me and, and uh, a good friend. And I appreciate you coming on the John Tegg show. It's so it's such an original name, isn't it? It's, so it's okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, JT it's all, during the day. It's all about the branding. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, man. And, and, you know, likewise to you, I hope you and your family are doing good. Say hi to the kids and, uh, you know, uh, take care of yourself. Yeah. Let me, yeah. That's what we have to do. Let me know how this rolls. Let's see how the numbers are at the end. Of oh, the I will. I, yeah. will. <laughs> I think, you're, I think you'll do well. I think people are, you know, I, because I've been interviewing a lot of actors, I think it'll be a nice yeah. change of pace for, uh, to hear a different take on things. No. And um, absolutely. If, if, uh, if people that do, have questions. I'm I'm the guy who gives back. So cool. Uh, and you know, if if you if you bug me too much, I'll say no. But if if you bug once, I might answer because it's important. Well, right? you're you're good like that. Yep, man. All right, buddy. Right. I love you. Rock on, you man. Later. Back at you, bud. Yeah, man. All right. Let's. Uh, we're signing off here on the John Tag Show. Make sure to check out <laughs> Rick Parks. I'm going to put all of his. Uh, all the info in the show notes and, and most of the things we talked about will be in the show notes as well. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, go ahead and hit subscribe. Also, give me a follow on Instagram at J-O-H-N-J-T-A-G-U-E and on Twitter, same handle, at J-O-H-N-J-T-A-G-U-E. See you next time. <laughs>